the intellectual and sincere convert that never was. So, also if you look at the Hebrew dictionary of the Bible, the word brethren is talked about. It says it means personification of a group of tribes who were regarded as near kinsmen of the Israelites. The Israelites meaning Jews. So basically it means some kind of relative of the Israelites. It doesn't mean literally brethren or literally brothers. For the Christian, salvation is obtained through having faith that Jesus is God incarnate and that he died for you to be forgiven and saved. All your sins will be forgiven and washed away by the power of the blood of Jesus, Christians say. For a, Christians, all you need, for a Christian, all you need is faith only. Good deeds are not necessary for your salvation, Romans 4.5. This Christian path to salvation will appear to be very attractive to those ignorant of the true teachings of God, because such a path does not demand or demands very little from its followers, faith only. Consequent, consequently, righteous deeds become in, insignificant, and those who stress the need for good deeds are often scorned and derided as being overly ritualistic and lacking in real faith. The third example. Regarding Thumama ibn Uthal, a notorious criminal who had attacked and killed many Muslim travelers, some Muslims caught him and took him to the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet recognized him and had him kept in the mosque with food and even ordered his own camel to be milked for him. They treated him like a guest rather than a war criminal. The Prophet Muhammad asked Umama what he had to say for himself, to which he replied, quote, If you want to kill in reprisal, you can have someone of noble blood to kill. If, out of your bounty, you want to forgive, I shall be grateful. If you want money in compensation, I shall give you whatever amount you ask. End quote. The Prophet freed him and allowed him to leave. The very same day, Thumama returned and declared his acceptance of Islam to the Prophet. The Quran, the Quran says that God deliberately created man with an inclination to do wrong, because pardoning those who turn repentant is a channel through which God's divine attributes of mercy and forgiveness are made manifest. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, quote, If you did not commit sins, Allah, God, would sweep you out of existence and replace you by another people who would commit sins. Ask Allah's forgiveness and he would then forgive them. Sahih Muslim Hadith. The process of falling into error, realizing the mistake and seeking God's forgiveness is also a channel for man's spiritual growth. It develops man's love for the Almighty and increases his respect and God consciousness. And when he turns to him, God Almighty, in humility and devotion, he continues that spiritual growth. Hello, peace be upon you, Islamic greetings from the God of Abraham, the God of Islam. Was Jesus' alleged crucifixion a valid human sin sacrifice that took away our sins according to biblical teachings? Let's look at the Bible and answer that question. First, the Hebrew Bible requires that the sacrificial ritual be administered by a priest according to Leviticus chapter 1 to 7. According to the accounts in the New Testament, Jesus was crucified by Roman soldiers in Matthew 27, 35, Mark 15, 24, Luke 23, 33, and John 19, 18, and verse 23. Second, the Hebrew Bible requires that the blood of the sin sacrifice had to be sprinkled by the priest on the veil of the sanctuary and on the altar in the temple, according to Leviticus chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. There is no evidence in the New Testament that this was done. Third, in the Hebrew Bible, it requires that the sin sacrifice be without any physical defects or blemishes. 
Uh, we know, of course, in the New Testament, Jesus was beaten, whipped, dragged on the ground before being crucified. Matthew 26, 67, 27, 26, 30, 31. Mark, chapter 14, 65, uh, chapter 15, verses 15 to 20. Luke 22, 63, John 18, 22, and chapter 19, verse 1, and verse 3. Moreover, as a Jew, Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day, a ritual that leaves a scar or sign of the covenant. According to the New Testament, uh, circumcision is considered mutilation. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 2, Galatians 5, verse 12. Theatricality and Pretense Aside from his extensive plagiarism to pass as an intellectual and sincere Muslim advancing the message of Islam, one thing stands out about Ismail is his sense for theatricality. It is as though everything he does is part of a performance meant to sell him to the audience as an ex-Muslim and show that his journey in and out of Islam was sincere. This is manifest in his calling himself converted to Islam, in his announcing and reminding the viewers of his conversion, in contrasting his before and after photos, in changing his name to Ismail Abu Adam and keeping it even when no longer Muslim, in keeping the pictures that present him as a Muslim on social media, in keeping an old video that shows him lecturing in a mosque when his other videos are now hidden from his channel, and in constantly playing the victim as though he is in imminent danger after he announced leaving Islam. Furthermore, in a video by Truth Shall Prevail, we see that Ismail Abu Adam whose real name is Neil Little John, has followed every step of the missionary contextualization process according to J. Smith, contextualization being a clever euphemism for pretending to belong to a religious community only to preach secretly against it, and feign apostasy later. They then went to become missionaries to the local community there in the center of Melbourne, the local Muslim community. So in order to do that, they, they they took on a C6 model themselves. So these are evangelical Christians, Australian Christians, who have Bible degree behind them. And I became a born-again evangelical Christian. I believed Jesus was God, of course, and I gave him my life and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I believed in all the Christian doctrines, the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus, the original sin, and I believe that the Bible was 100% the Word of God. I was also committed to my faith. I used to go to church on a regular basis, a non-denominational church. I used to uh, be friends with a pastor and fellowship with other evangelical born-again Christians. I used to watch TV shows where the gospel was preached. I used to also preach the gospel to my friends. Who went and joined the Muslim community Thanks be to God Almighty Allah, I have left the darkness of my former faith and religion, and I embrace the truth and the divine light of Islam. They took on Muslim name, they wore Muslim dress. My name is Ismail. They moved into the community, they became part of the mosque. You know, ten years ago I had said shahada in this masjid here in Canada, and now I'm actually going to start giving uh, the sermons, khutbahs, in, in, the, in that same mosque. Alhamdulillah started teaching within the mosque because of their ability to understand scripture they quickly rose up through the ranks and became uh, in one case just underneath an imam of the mosque Muhammad's method وسلم, can be summed up in three words merciful forgiving and generous may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and give him the best in the next life inshallah I have decided to finally leave Islam. Coming out. Neil Little John's religious and political worldview went through extreme changes in a matter of weeks. After being strongly pro Palestinian and skeptical of the media's geopolitical narrative, he suddenly began to promote material of Zionist lunatics like Robert Spencer, Pamela Galler and preachers of hate like Sam Shamoon, all of whom he had previously denounced in the strongest terms. Walid Shabbat and Robert Spencer and Ali Sina and Ayan Hershey Ali and all of these other individuals, Sam Shamoon, etc. Uh, the majority of people are being brainwashed by these individuals. 
Sam Shimon is another Christian apologist who is very ignorant with very bad manners and morals <clears throat> and he uses foul language in his uh, discourses and his uh, debates and dialogues with, with Muslims and again someone who is full of hate and someone that is to be ignored. Call me Smurf, I quote verses till I'm blue in the face. Mm. We lace the track with doctrinal facts. Mike and I collab on a beat, then we drop it on wax.